officially admit Cervical Cancer Awareness Month, which I know anything with cancer sounds super scary, but I want to make it less scary. And I think the best way to combat fear is with information, so... Let's do it. So let's start with HPV, the origin of 99% of all cervical cancer. HPV, or human papillomavirus, is a super, super common virus that causes warts. A bunch of different types. Some strains pop up on your thumbs, some on your feet, some on your neck, some on your genitals. It's passed through skin-to-skin -skin contact, so just touching, which is why 90% of the population will get it at some point. The good news is that most strains of HPV, they go away on their own and they're totally harmless. The bad news is that some strains are not harmless and can cause cervical cancer. But even so, less than 1% of all vagina bearers who contract HPV will get cervical cancer. So the silver lining, my friends. One way to help prevent cervical cancer is to always, always have safer sex. Have safer sex. Have safer sex. I know, I'm like a freaking repeating robot person. What are those called? I'm a broken record. But using condoms and dental bands every time, getting your screenings done, these will all reduce your risk. Because HPV can be passed just by touching and because it's hard to test for because there often aren't any symptoms, safer sex alone isn't enough. This is why everybody, men and women and everyone, should be getting their HPV vaccine. You've heard of Gardasil, right? It's a safe and potentially life-saving set of three shots that prevent some strains of HPV. Routine screening for HPV is another important part of cervical cancer prevention. This is what a pap smear is for, or as the cool kids call it, a pap. If you are a noble vagina owner, you should start getting a pap when you turn 21 and every three years after that. I know pap smear doesn't sound like butterflies and rainbows, especially with that whole smear part, but it's actually painless and pretty quick. You lay on your back and then the doctor will gently peek into your vagina and get a little swab of your cervix. Don't feel alone if you feel embarrassed about getting a pap smear. I was really embarrassed the first time. I still get a little embarrassed. I mean it's a little intimate and it feels kind of weird to have a stranger like all up in my vag. But we gotta remember it's in the name of a healthy vagina and your doctor has seen hundreds if not thousands of them in every shape, size, color, whatever you can imagine. Well, maybe not whatever you can imagine, but a lot of vaginas. So take deep breaths if you need to relax and it will be over before you know it. Then the doctor is gonna send your cells to the lab for examination. Now for most people, that's it. Their cancer screening goes off without a hitch and life just keeps moving. Once in a while, someone will hear back from their doctor about an abnormal pap. If this happens to you, don't panic. There are a lot of different things that could be going on. I've had an abnormal pap before and it turned out to be nothing. Now there are a few different procedures they might ask you to come back for. One, a colposcopy. Maybe it's colposcopy. Basically, they look at your cervix with a magical vagina magnifying glass. Second is a biopsy. That's where they're gonna take a tiny little sample of your cervix and and do some further examination. Or they might ask you to do a leap, which is where they're going to remove the abnormal cells from your cervix. There was a time when cervical cancer was the number one cause of cancer death for women in the US. Those times are no more. Thank you to the awesome advances like vaccines and pap smears. The number has drastically decreased. And hey, what a better time than Cervical Cancer Awareness Month to spread the word and decrease that number even more. You know what I'm saying? As usual guys, if you have any questions, post them in the comments. We'll be sure to get back to you and I will see you next week. Have a great week.